Hey guys, welcome back. I'm in the mood for some color, so let's jump right into it. So you'll probably remember a few videos ago when I did my Huda Beauty Neon Obsession tutorial um, that I used the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the white shade, and it pretty much ruined the look. So I threw that away. A bunch of you guys suggested this NYX white eyeshadow base, so I picked some of that up from Ulta. So we're gonna go ahead and try that out today. Um, I also picked up this Morphe M173 brush, which I'm just gonna dip right into this pot of eyeshadow base. Oh, it seems pretty creamy. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and start with that on the lids. And you guys probably will also notice that my sinuses are still acting up. Um, I feel like the seasonal allergies in Northeast Ohio just never end. And I've tried all of the allergy meds. I've tried the over-the-counter shit. I've tried the stuff that you have to buy with an ID and nothing seems to work. So I guess this is, this is just where we're at, so. So if I sound really sinusy, I'm sorry. I can even like hear my ears are all clogged up too. So again, this is a first impression. I just opened up this pot of eyeshadow base. So we'll see how it goes. So it definitely does have like a creamy kind of feel about it. It doesn't feel like it's setting down, but it also doesn't feel as like wet and sloppy as the ColourPop concealer did. So I'd say already we're doing a little bit better than we did with that. So then on a MAC 221, I'm going to go into the shade Single from the Morphe James Charles palette. And it's funny because it seems like now that the whole James Charles scandal is over, you can find these palettes really easily at Ulta. Like I see them every time I go there and they always have like a bunch of them. So um, if you were at all interested in picking this palette up and you never were able to find it, you can pretty much go into any Ulta and pick one up now. And I actually really like this palette and I'm not a fan of James Charles by any stretch of the imagination, but there's just so many many colors in this palette and there's so many things that you can do with it. The quality of it's really good. I think that you really just have to know how to work with it and know how to use it and you shouldn't really have any problems with it. But I've actually only used this color a handful of times and I've never used it as like the main or like the deepest kind of color. So today's the first time that I'm doing that. And just kind of building that color up into the outer corner. I am going to go in and build it up into the inner corner as well. But for right now, I'm just kind of starting in that outer corner and building up the intensity that I want there. All right, now you'll probably see that that eyeshadow primer is creasing on my eyelids. Now hopefully this will keep the eyeshadow in place and my eyeshadow won't crease, but let's go ahead and just tap some of that creasing out before I get in there and lay down any shadow on top of it. With that same shade, I'm just gonna start to build up the inner part of the lid. Again, this is gonna be more of a halo smoky eye look today, so go ahead and build that color up there as well. And I've got a zit right there underneath the head of my eyebrow that I did not conceal properly. I will take care of that before this look is complete. Don't worry about that. Now, I feel like one of the biggest issues that people have with these really bright shadows is that they stain the eyelids and I guess like if you're the kind of person that doesn't really wear makeup on a normal basis and you're gonna use colors like these for like some weird like special occasion or for like a costume or something like that and the next day you're not gonna be wearing any makeup yeah it could be weird to have some you know pink stained eyelids or whatever it is but if you're the kind of person that wears makeup every day, um, does it really matter if your eyelids are stained a little bit? Because I mean, the way that I look at things, if my eyelids are stained, I'm just gonna slap some more makeup on top of it anyway the next day, and you're not gonna see any of that staining underneath. So I don't really know what the big deal is about staining as an issue with these products, but it's really not an issue for me. 
And I'm not gonna be too worried about blending out the edges of the shade because I am gonna be going in with another color to blend it out further. So it doesn't need to be completely blended out. And let's go ahead and take some of this primer underneath the lower lash line as well because I am gonna be taking those shadows underneath. So now on this MAC pencil brush, which I think is a 219, yeah, I think that's what it is, um, I'm gonna go into that same shade called Single, stamping that color in right on top of that primer on the outer corner of the lower lash line. And typically when I'm putting on my eyeshadow underneath my eyes, I don't really look at a mirror to do that because I want to stretch that skin so that I can really get in there and pack that color on, which makes me wonder how I would do at like the no mirror makeup challenge, you know what I mean? Um, where you're doing all of your makeup without looking into a mirror. I kind of want to do that. And I know makeup challenges haven't really been a thing on YouTube in a long fucking time. When I first started my channel two years ago, a lot of those challenges were really popular, but I was like, eh, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I don't want to do these challenges. They just seem really silly but something like that I'm just really curious to see if I would be any good at that but what do you guys think would you like to see a no mirror makeup challenge and see how good or bad I would be at it um, let me know down below maybe I could make that happen you know overall I'm a really big fan of like a dark smoky bronzy neutral colored eyeshadow look but I really like these bright bold vivid colors too but I'm all over the place honestly I just I don't think I could stick to the same makeup look every day I just don't think that would be very fun and then wrapping that same shade around the inner corner and for a look like this, I almost don't really care about precision too much. I just think that when you've got a lot of look going on, it's not really about precision. This is more about like quantity, not quality. So if it's not perfect, it just doesn't fucking matter. So now that I've got all that purple packed in there, I wanna blend that out with this coral shade from this Huda Orange Neon Obsession palette. Um, this is the bottom center shade here. It's kind of like a corally pinky kind of tone. And just kind of stamp that along that outer edge of single. See how that blends out, see how we like those together. Now I do really like these shades together, but I think that I am gonna go over top with the shade that's similar to this one, but just has a little bit more of that orangey, corally kind of tone to it. I think I just want to warm things up a tiny bit more than what this is doing. So this color in the upper right hand corner of this palette, it's very similar to what this is. It's just a little bit more corally. So let's go ahead and build that into that outer edge and see how we like that. Yeah, I think that's more of what I was going for. Just seems a little bit more interesting and a little less obvious than just like a pink and purple together, you know what I mean? And then I wiped off my pencil brush that I used to apply that shadow on the underneath side of my eye. Take that same brush and press into that corally shade and then just kind of skim the edge of what I've laid down here so that we can add a little bit of that brightness to the outside of the purple underneath the same way that we did with the purple on top. And again, this might overall end up looking just a little bit sloppier than what I normally do, but I think that when you're working with colors like this in an application or an overall style like this, I don't think that it really matters if it's a little bit messy. So now I'm gonna lay down the shade Skip. This is from the James Charles palette on this little Morphe brush. This is like a bullet crease brush that came in some set that I bought at Ulta. I wanna lay that color down right next to this purple shade to kind of give myself a transition into a shimmery yellow right in the center. And I think that a yellow is going to make more sense right next to a pink than it's going to next to a purple. And if you look where I laid down that eyeshadow primer, where it's creased, the eyeshadow is definitely collecting into that crease right there. 
So I guess we're just gonna have to see how long this shadow lasts with that primer. But just as a first impression, I don't know that I'm really feeling this primer all that much. So then to really make the center of this look pop, I'm gonna go into the shade Going Bananas by Give Me Glow Cosmetics. Um, I'm gonna go on this brush right here. It came from the same brush set that I got the Bullet Crease brush from. Again, I don't know what this one or the other one is called, but it was a really cheap eye set that I got at Ulta. But just taking Going Bananas on that packing brush, tapping off the excess, and I am going to press that shade right down the center of the lid. And I used to go in first with a finger and lay down a shade like this over top of a glitter primer and then try to blend the edges of it out from there. And it's just really hard to blend the edges out when you're doing it that way, where if you take a dry brush and you lay down the shadow and kind of blend it out to start with, you can then build up that color on top and you already have the blend, you know what I mean? And then we can just add that intensity to the center with a finger and it's just so much easier and I just think it works out so much better. That is definitely a sunset halo smoky eye if I've ever seen one. I feel like this just needs like a little black airbrush palm tree somewhere in there. And then we've got like a full on 80s mall t-shirt going on here on my eyes. That's fine, I don't mind. And a shadow like this is just so versatile. I mean, you can get a really soft, subtle kind of yellow sheen from this or you can go in and build it up really intense and really vivid, really reflective. It just depends on how you choose to use it. And lay that same shade in the center of the lower lash line. That way we've got that pop on the underneath side as well. And then I want that to be a little bit more intense right down the center. So on my pinky finger, I'm gonna take that same shade and just kind of press right into the center of where I've laid that down. So you can see the difference on this side with a finger application laid down on top of what I already had compared to this side where it's just laid down with a brush. Same on the bottom, just pressing into that lower lash line so that we can have a little bit more intensity there. So this look definitely calls for a glitter inner corner. I'm gonna use ABBA size four by Lit Cosmetics. Um, this is one that's almost like a light pink base, but has like that blue teal aqua kind of shift to it just to add a different tone into this look and I'm gonna go ahead and pop that right down over top of the NYX glitter primer you already knew that was gonna happen lay down some glitter primer right on that inner corner with a pencil brush and then while that brush is still a little bit tacky I'm gonna dip right into the glitter tap off any excess press that glitter right when I dye, I want glitter mixed with my ashes. Somebody please make sure that happens. So then for the waterline, I'm gonna do the Night Moth Lip Pencil by MAC. Um, I'm gonna do that on the outer corners. And this will correspond with the pinks and purples we have going on on the outside edges. And then on the center of the waterline, we'll do the Shockwave Neon Liner by LA Girl Cosmetics. This is in the shade Screamin'. And this will just work really well with the yellow shadow that we have going on next to it. 
And then to tie in that teal reflection off that glitter on the inner corners, um, I'm gonna go in with the highlighter Peacock. This is by Posh Pepper Beauty. And this is a really awesome teal highlighter. It's really affordable. Posh Pepper Beauty is an indie brand. I've mentioned them on my channel several times. I will go ahead and leave a link down below if you are interested in checking out any of her highlighters. They're really awesome quality. They're really affordable. And if there's a shade that you're looking for that is not available on her website, she does do custom orders, so. And I figure if we're not going for wearable makeup, then let's just not go for wearable makeup. <laughs> All right, we're looking pretty weird. Let me go ahead and get my lashes done off camera and I'll be right back for lips. So lashes are done and all that's left is a lip. Um, I figured I wanted to keep that a little bit weird too. So I am gonna use the MAC Grand Illusion Liquid Lip Color in the shade Let's Rock. Um, this has almost like an orange pinky shifting base with a greenish glitter going on to it as well. There's all kinds of shit going on in this tube. It's an old favorite. I don't really use it that often because it just is kind of fucking weird. But I figured today's a go big or go home kind of look, so that's what we're doing. Now I do have a lip liner on. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil in the shade Rush. I like it because it really is just like a nice natural, like it's my lip tone in a lip liner. So I've had that one on the whole video, so I'm just gonna top that off with this lip color. I just love this because it's just so weird. It's it's pink, it's orange, it's green, it's all of that shit. It's not really a wearable color, but it really is a fun one. And I'm kind of doing a thinner application of this. Now this does have almost like a minty kind of feel to it. Um, not quite as minty as the Buxom lip glosses, um, but it's, it's definitely there. There definitely is a little bit of that minty feel to it. Add a little bit more of that in the center of the lip. And that's pretty much going to be it for today. I am going to do something with my hair, and I haven't quite decided what. Uh, but when this video goes live, there will be photos on my Instagram page. So if you want to see how the entire look turned out, follow me over there. There will be a link down below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you guys on the next one.